Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now this image looks the way it does, mostly because of the way it's lit. Uh, what I've employed is a, a, a form of rim lighting. Now, if you're using some form of rim lighting, uh, it basically means that you're going to light your subject, in this case the rose, from behind. So what I've got here is a three-foot octobox uh, attached to a Profoto uh, D2 Studio Flash. Uh, this is a thousand joule unit and it has a modeling light and uh, all the other sort of uh, bells and whistles that you'd expect. Quite importantly, it's remotely controlled from the uh, flash trigger, which I'll place on the camera in due course. Also on the camera, I have a 70 to 24 millimeter zoom lens. Uh, and again, I'll be using this at the 70 end today to give me some working distance uh, between the, uh, the rows uh, and the camera. And as usual, I have the camera tethered uh, into Capture One software just to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, so without a flash trigger on the top of the camera, um, as I usually do, the first thing is just to check that uh, the contamination that we're probably going to get from the house lights in here won't affect the final image at all. So in order to do that, um, I'll just set the uh, camera controls using the software. Um, so I'm using uh, 1 250th of a second for the shutter speed. That's the flash sync speed for this camera. Um, I've set the ISO to 100. And to do this test, I'm just going to take the aperture to its minimum of 2.8. So it's wide open. So we'll just take a, a test shot. There we go. And you can see from that that we're, at that level, there is quite a lot of contamination from the house lights. But I don't intend to be using an aperture of 2.8. It will give far too narrow a depth of field. Um, so I'm going to take that up to um, an arbitrary f8 to start with, uh, and we see how we go. So we'll just try that. There we go. And at f8, uh, there is uh, no contamination uh, to worry about. So with that out of the way, the next thing to do would be to uh, attach the uh, flash trigger to the top of the camera, like this. And we'll just turn that on. And as I said before, this will give me control of the, uh, the flash uh, round the back there. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to turn the modeling light on and off on the flash, I can do it from the top of the camera here. Like this, and out again like this. Uh, and I can also alter the energy level on the flash. So with that on and in place, um, the next thing to do would be just to take an arbitrary uh, exposure, uh, just so that we can uh, have a look and see how much energy we're likely to need. So I can see from that straight away that there is uh, far too much uh, light going on there. So I'll take the energy down uh, on the flash by about three stops. And we'll just give that another go. Okay, that's starting to get there. So the essence of what we're trying to do with the, uh, the rim lighting isn't necessarily to light the face of the, the flower it's to light uh, the back of it. Um, however, in this case, uh, as you can see from the image on the screen, uh, the contrast is way too high and the flower itself is all blocked up. So what I need to do is to give myself uh, a bit more leeway. And the easiest way to do that uh, is to uh, put a black background in here behind the flower but it doesn't obscure all of the softbox. That's why I've used a three foot softbox to do this. Um, so what I'm going to do is just put a black flag in here, just about here somewhere, just so I end up with a black background uh, and plenty of uh, bare softbox round the sides. So this is uh, relatively simple. 
Uh, this is basically um, just a, a piece of black cloth, uh, which I'm just going to position uh, by looking through the viewfinder to get it in more or less the right place where I want it. Actually, that's not too bad, uh, just as I've plonked it there. So let me just um, take another image and show you what that looks like. There we are. So now we're starting to get the, the beginnings of a uh, rim-lit effect. But there's still not enough light, really, um, on, the, on the subject. Uh, so what I'm going to do is increase the exposure um, by increasing the energy uh, on the flash. And I'm going to take it up by, to start with, a full stop. And we'll just take another image. There we are. That's starting to get there. One of the um, effects of using this in this way is that um, you'll end up with quite a lot of flare in the, uh, in the lens. Uh, with the, the, the best lenses that you can get, you will still get flare with a flash of this, uh, this energy going straight into the lens. So in order to, uh, to mitigate that, and actually to um, start illuminating the front face of the, uh, the rose here, what I'm going to do is put an aperture mask uh, in the way here, um, which acts a bit like a, uh, a very good lens hood. Okay, so I'm going to start by just putting a stand about here somewhere, uh, with this boom arm on it. And that is what I'm going to hang my um, aperture mask from. And the mask itself is basically just a piece of card, uh, which I've cut a hole in, uh, and I've just attached a couple of clips to the top. And the other side of the card is actually white, uh, so it will reflect some of the energy from here back onto the rose again. Now the idea of this is that it's going to mask off the outside of the softbox, preventing flare uh, on the lens of the camera. Uh, but it does take a bit of lining up. Uh, so I'll just move that along whilst looking through the viewfinder to get it in approximately the right position, which is something like that. Just take another test. There we are, that's increased the, uh, the contrast. It's still not quite in the right position. As you can see, I've got these uh, stripes down the side here. Um, so basically I need to move the, um, the mask here slightly further away. So let's just do that. There we are, there's only small amounts of change that need to be done to change the outcome quite markably. Okay, let's give that another go. There we are, that's much better. So you should have seen that that has increased the contrast quite, uh, quite a lot in that image. So it's probably worth recapping at this point uh, just to show you where everything is. So we have uh, the studio flash right at the very back. Then we have the uh, softbox, the octobox. Then the fl black flag. And you can see the sort of distances that are involved in here between the subject and the black flag and the octobox uh, and the aperture mask, which I've got at the front here. Uh, and then moving further forward still, we have the camera, which gives you a bit of scale as to how the whole thing is set out. Right. Now the next thing that I want to address uh, is just to get uh, a little more illumination on the face of the, uh, of the rows here. And to do that, uh, I'm going to recycle some of the energy uh, which is coming out from the side of this uh, softbox. So in order to get some more light on the face of the rows, I'm just going to use this mirror. Uh, I'm going to use a mirror instead of a piece of card uh, because this uh, is much more efficient. So I'm just going to attach that to the top of this stand. 
Now in order to find out exactly where to point this, uh, I'm just going to turn the modelling light on um, on this uh, flash unit. Like so. And now, just by uh, rotating this, I can actually see what's going to happen. Just spinning it round ever so slightly so that I can see uh, the difference that it's making. There, that's about right. So we'll just tighten that up there. So we don't need the modding light on anymore, Let's turn that out. And we'll just take another image. Okay, so that has made uh, quite a marked difference. If I show you the before, this is what we had before. And that is what we've got with the mirror, which is quite a nice effect. I do think it's possibly a little too strong uh, and the rim lighting needs to be increased somewhat. Uh, also, if I just increase the magnification on this image, um, the back part of the flower is actually ever so slightly out of focus. The front bit's okay, uh, but it seems to be going out a bit at the back. Uh, so what I might do is um, just adjust my aperture. So I'll take that up by two stops uh, to f16, which will give me a bigger depth of field. Uh, so I'll need to compensate for that by adding two stops of energy. And also, I want to um, increase the effect of the, uh, the rim lighting, so I'm going to add another stop to it as well. Now that will um, increase the effect of the rim lighting, but it will also increase the uh, lighting on the front of the flower. So in order to control that, what I'm actually going to do is just move this mirror back a little bit. Therefore, the uh, inverse square law will reduce the amount of um, light which is getting on to the flower. There we go. So we'll give that another test. So I think that's had the desired effect that I was looking for. If I zoom in and have a look round. Uh, the actual image is quite nice and sharp, which is good. Uh, the rim lighting is more pronounced than it was before. We go to the previous one, go to what we've got now, uh, and yet the lighting on the front face of the rose is controlled. So I think that's quite a nice image. That's probably the one that I'm going to go for. Uh, so I'll just put a a mark on that. And then just finally, just to add uh, a little bit more uh, to the image, I'm just going to add some water spray uh, to the actual rose. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so we'll just give that a bit of a try and see what difference it makes. Let's take another one. Oh yes, that's starting to get quite a nice effect. I just zoom in, you can see what I've done there. I'm just going to add a bit more, uh, but I think that's probably enough as it is, but I will go a bit over the top because we can always just use this one instead of the one we're about to take. So I'll just add a bit more of the water. Okay, that seems to have uh, worked quite well. I can see that there's actually some water spray got caught in the air. Um, so if I just take another image, that should have dissipated by now. There we go, that's a lot cleaner. Right, so we'll just have a close look at the image. Very nice. Now each one of these water drops uh, has a slight lensing effect uh, which can be quite pleasant. Okay. 
So as far as capturing the image is concerned, that's about it. Uh, so there's just a little bit of work to do in Photoshop, which is what we're going to do now. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, uh, and I've selected um, three variants. Uh, this first one uh, is with no water drops on the, uh, on the rose itself. Uh, so if we just have a bit of a zoom in, we can see that that's uh, quite a nice image. Uh, lots of potential in there. And then the second one uh, is the one with a small amount of water drops on the, uh, on the image, on the rose, which is OK, which is quite pleasant. And finally, the third one is where I did quite a lot of water drops on the rose. Uh, now, this is really down to personal preference, but this is the one that I'm actually going to take forward. Uh, so I'm just going to delete the other two. OK, so the first thing to do is just to um, clean up these, uh, these edges. Uh, and uh, there's a multitude of different ways to do that. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do uh, is just add uh, another layer, like this. So with the background selected, what I want to do is just sample some of this black. So I'm just using the eyedropper tool. Uh, I've got a, quite a large average set of uh, 31 by 31, which should be good. So I'll just grab a bit of that, like so, and move on to the new layer. And using a paintbrush, I'll just paint in over those lines, like so. There we are. Right. Uh, now, the next thing, um, and probably final thing, that I need to do to this is just to um, have a little look at a crop. So I could use 16 by 9. We'll have a look and see what that looks like. Now, when I originally grabbed the image, um, I wasn't that bothered about uh, all the uh, outsides uh, of the, the plant um, because uh, basically I was just trying to show what I was doing with the lighting. Um, having said that, I think it's quite nice to have these bits of green in. Uh, that's possibly a little tight, so I might not use a 16 by 9 for my finished image here. Let's see what square looks like. I think this works much better as a square crop. As then I can include uh, some of my greenery. Just crop that. So there we have it. The finished image which is virtually straight out of the camera with very little Photoshop work. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I uh, managed to make that. Uh, and if you like seeing these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.